Good day. We are C1 and we'll be discussing about the emerging diseases. So the emerging diseases is defined as diseases that were once a major health problem globally or in a particular country and then declined dramatically, but are again becoming health problems for a significant proportion of the population. So now we will be presenting some of the emerging diseases and the diseases are as follows. Uh, so bubonic plague is a disease characterized by black and swollen lymph nodes and is caused by the bacteria Yersinia pestis, which is a gram-negative bacteria. It is transmitted from rodents to humans by flea bites or through aerosol. Over the years, we have seen less cases, but it's still endemic in parts of the world. So for the pathogenesis of plague, um, we have bubonic plague, which is the which comes from the infected flea or pneumonic plague, in which the bacteria can be spread uh, through the aerosols. So from the inoculation site, it, uh, the bacteria spreads to the lymphoid tissues where they can proliferate. The bacteria then bind to host cells and then inject uh, your Yersinia outer coat proteins, which block phagocytosis and impair the immune response. Okay, to look at the histology of uh, plague, we would see uh, proliferation of the bacteria. There would be effusions with protein and polysaccharides, uh, necrosis of tissues with uh, bleeding, thrombosis, and swelling, as well as neutrophilic infiltrates uh, that accumulate in the necrotic areas. Clinically, we would see a pustule or ulcer on the site of the flea bite and enlarged lymph nodes which are plum colored and may infarct or rupture to the skin. In pneumonic plague, you would see hemorrhagic and necrotizing bronchopneumonia and for septicemic plague, there would be a bacteremia and uh, induction of DIC. So as said before, there, uh, there have been three plagues which were caused by uh, Yersinia pestis. The next disease, we have smallpox. And smallpox is caused by the viruses variola and vaccinia. So vaccinia is the one used for uh, smallpox vaccine. So for the pathogenesis of smallpox, uh, the virus enters through the upper respiratory tract and is taken to the lymphoid tissues. They then uh, multiply there and are taken to other organs through the blood. That's called viremia. And then they would multiply in other organs, causing a secondary viremia, which can lead to the clinical manifestations. Specifically in the skin, there would be infiltration uh, with the mononuclear cells and then swollen epidermal cells due to cytoplasm distension. That's called uh, balloon degeneration. Uh, and vesicles appear because the cell membrane break da breaks down and is filled with white cells and tissue debris. Uh, clinically, there would be a 10 to 14 day incubation. And then after, after that incubation period, there would be fever, malaise, uh, headache, and rashes starting from macules and then papules to vesicles and then pustules. Uh, initially, they would start at, at the mouth and pharynx and then spread to the face, the trunk, and the legs. So after about uh, six days, there would be ulcerations in the mouth, which would mean that the bacteria, the, the disease is contagious. After two weeks, the crusts seen in the pustules would fall off. Uh, diagnosis can be through PCR. Uh, viral isolation or serology in which uh, we're going to check for uh, antibodies. Uh, the treatment would be supportive. We can give metisazone, which is a prophylaxis. You could also give an antiviral. So for the prevention of smallpox, it would naturally be the vaccine that was given, although routine vaccination has stopped in 1971. So for timeline, smallpox was first identified by a Persian physician in the 9th century and it has been endemic in Europe in the 16th century.
The dengue virus is a flavivirus transmitted by female mosquitoes, mainly of the species Aedes aegypti. There are four serotypes of the dengue virus, and recovery from infection is believed to provide lifelong immunity against that serotype. Antibody-dependent enhancement is thought to increase severe dengue, and those at risk are those reinfected with the virus of a different serotype or infants who have maternal antibodies against dengue. Ending Vaksha follows this pattern of immunity. As for the pathogenesis and pathology of dengue, its mode of transmission is through a mosquito bite and dengue fever is known as breakbone fever. It triggers the immune response to reset the hypothalamic set point for fever, which increases the BP in vessels, which then causes the rash. The classical dengue rash, known as Hermann's rash, is presented on image B. The two images on the slide present the course of illness of dengue, which are the febrile, critical, and recovery phase. The second image, on the other hand, shows the signs and symptoms present in dengue. For patients with suspected dengue virus disease, nucleic acid amplification tests are the preferred method of laboratory diagnosis. Together with blood tests, tourniquet, and IgM antibody testing may be used as well. As for treatment, it is mainly symptomatic with acetaminophen as DOC for fever, and supportive care is advised as well. Timeline Ebola virus is a genus classified under phyloviridae, and the most lethal species is the Zare Ebola virus. Its genome has a single-stranded RNA, and the vector is suspected to be bats. Induction of macropenocytosis leading to release of cytokines and inflammation. GP binding with endothelial cells leading to exaggerated inflammatory responses. Hemorrhagic fever has a very high case fatality rate due to shock and death from bleeding. A combination of suggestive symptoms and a possible exposure indicate a possible diagnosis. Confirmatory tests, PCR or serological tests, isolation precautions, and vaccines. Timeline Measles, also known as Zerbiola virus, has only one serotype. It is the leading cause of vaccine-preventable death and illness worldwide, and its immunity is lifelong. Its MOT is the respiratory droplets. It disseminates to reticular endothelial system and then with its focal replication in the epithelial surfaces. And for the stages of infection, in the exanthem, we have the rash and lymphatidomathy in two to four days. For its clinical manifestations, it has blotchy reddish brown rash, coplic spots, and the wart in fincal day cells found in the lung and the sputum. And its diagnosis is positive serologic test for serum measles, IgM antibody, and its complications is immune suppression and secondary infection. And here is the timeline of measles. Mumps virus has only one serotype. It occurs most commonly among school-age children and college-age young adults, and it is self-limiting and immunity is lifelong. Its MOTA are respiratory droplets, direct contact, and fomites, and it disseminates through blood to salivary glands, testes, and central nervous system. Its clinical manifestations are followed by salivary gland swelling within 48 hours. Its diagnosis uh, is the detection of mumps virus RNA by RTC-PCR by a buccal or oral swab, and its treatment is supportive. And here is the timeline of mumps. So for polio, polio belongs to the enteroviruses. It is a spherical and unencapsulated virus with a positive sense RNA strand. And polioviruses has three serotypes. So what's important here in the slide to remember is that viral capsid proteins, VP1 to 4, are important for the infection of polioviruses. For the pathogenesis of polioviruses, the virus enters the body through the fecal-oral route either via person-to-person -person contact or through contaminated food or water source. So the virus enters into and replicates in the host cell. The capsid proteins will create the pore into the host cell. Then the RNA of the virus will enter the host cell. Then replication and assembly will occur. So the virus will spread through the lymphatics, then to the blood. And later on will cause paralysis, flaccid paralysis, and Muscle wasting, so muscle wasting will be associated with the denervation atrophy caused by the polio virus. So two vaccines have been developed for polio, the Salk and Sabin polio vaccines. So Salk will be the 
um, inactivated and injectable form of polio vaccine while the Sabin will be the live and aura of polio vaccine. So polio is diagnosed via immunoassay, which is the gold standard, as well as PCR and viral culture. In this slide is the timeline for polio. So what's important to note here is that the Salk vaccine was first developed before the Sabin vaccine. So for diphtheria, so diphtheria is caused by the bacteria Corinebacterium diphtheriae, a non-spore-forming slender gram-positive rod with club-shaped ends, and this spreads via respiratory droplets or contact to skin exudates. Diphtheria has two forms, respiratory and cutaneous diphtheria. For the pathogenesis of diphtheria, it has two fragments, fragments A and B. Fragment A catalyzes the covalent transfer of ADP ribose to elongation factor 2, which inhibits its function, while fra fragment B has two domains which facilitate the entry of toxin into the host cell. The exotoxin causes necrosis of epithelium with fibrinosuppurative exudates. So there will be coagulation of exudates on the ulcerated surface, which will create a tough, gray-to-black pseudomembrane. So there is also intense neutrophilic infiltrate in the tissues with vascular congestion, interstitial edema, and fibrin exudation. Lastly, there will be sloughing off of the membrane, which would cause bleeding and asphyxiation on patients. Here in this slide, we can see that diphtheria causes systemic pathologic changes to the body, specifically to the heart, nerve, liver, kidneys, as well as the adrenal glands. This is specific to the respiratory form of diphtheria. For prevention and treatment, we provide toxoid immunization for prevention, and this would cause production of antibodies against the toxin. We also give antitoxin either intramuscularly or intravenously to neutralize circulating toxin and antimicrobial drugs to arrest toxin production. Timeline of diphtheria, what's important here is that on 1613, there was an epidemic in Spain which was termed El Año de los Garotilios, which means year of strangulation. So this is due to the many deaths of the patients caused by asphyxiation of the pseudomembrane that was produced by the diphtheria. Also in 1913, the Schick's test was, was developed, and in 1949, Alex's test was developed. Leptospirosis, causative agent, Leptospira enterogans. It is a zoonotic disease, reservoir, rats, mice, wild rodents. Mode of transmission, exposure to urine contaminated waters through breaks in the skin and mucous membranes. Diagnosis, dark field microscopy examination and culture. Confirmatory through serology, agglutination test. Prevention and control, avoid exposure to potentially contaminated water. Timeline of leptospirosis. Anthrax, causative agent, bacillus anthracis, zoonotic type of infection. Infected by spores, bacilli spread via lymphatics to the bloodstream and multiply freely in the blood and tissues. Three major forms of anthrax, cutaneous anthrax, also known as the central black escar lesion, inhalational anthrax, oral wool sorters disease, gastrointestinal anthrax, involves severe bloody diarrhea. Pathogenesis of anthrax, edema factor causes edema, lethal factor, major virulence factor and cause of death in infective animals and humans. So we have some review questions and we prepared four questions on the right side of your screen. So first, what is the virus responsible for the smallpox? It is variola. What is the virus that is responsible for the measles? It is rubiola. What is the cutaneous form of the anthrax infection, which is black escar? And lastly, what is the pulmonary form of anthrax infection? It is the wool sorter's disease. So we all learned a lot in this uh, infectious uh, re-emerging disease module. So again, I hope that you enjoyed and learned a lot in this module.